And in Yulin, China, dogs are food. They'd laugh at us if I tried to defend a dog from being slaughtered. They'd laugh at me. Just like they laugh at me out the front of the cow slaughterhouse. They do. They laugh at us. Make fun of us, beep their horns and say, oh, they're bacon, they don't matter. And we're trying to defend these innocent animals that are no, no different to a dog. Okay, but this is, this is how society catches up. Okay, that first, any truth is ridiculed at the start, isn't it? Okay, then, then, it's, then it's violently opposed. Okay, three stages of truth. Then people get aggressive with me, and that, that happens. They're closer than what you think. And then it's accepted as self-evident. So all truth passes through these stages. Any movement of justice, the black rights movement, women's rights, the suffragettes, okay, women's rights, they come up against this. Oh, women deserve rights. They were laughing at them. Laughing at them, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Laughing at people saying black people should uh, integrate into society. And this is just a sign of the times. quite a uncomfortable thing to talk about. Not everyone wants to know that, you know, their lifestyle choices might be harming animals. It's not like you're eating meat, you're eating an animal. You're eating someone, not something. The, the animals are victims? Do you believe yeah. animals are victims? Well, no. You don't believe animals are victims? And I want to talk about how we can help animals and it's quite a simple thing and not everyone um, is aware that by buying certain products we are contributing to some of the worst animal abuse that happens on earth. 98% of all animal cruelty happens in the meat, dairy and egg industries. 99% uh, of animals are, f are factory farmed and the other 1% still go to a slaughterhouse. Animal use in this day and age is completely unnecessary. It's something from the Stone Ages and needs to be left in the past. They exist for their own reasons, man. Yeah. Not, not to serve us and not so we can eat them. No, no, you can yeah. eat them. Do you think it's necessary for you to consume animals? Do you know what necessary means? No, I mean... A necessity. No, I choose to do it. You choose to do it. Who am I to judge you? You know, I used to be in gangs using drugs, hurting people around me, committing conscious violence, not unconscious violence, and I was eating animals. So I don't think I'm better than anyone. I'm, I'm here just to spread my truth, okay, and, and, and to help animals. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad or judged or anything like that. If anything, I'm the one who should be judged. Do you think people wanna, would want to eat animals if they've seen them in a slaughterhouse? Yeah. We're not naturally uh, drawn to eat dead animals, are we? But when, when it's taken away from the animal and put in a little package, and it makes sense because putting a dead body inside of yours can't be good for you. But look what they go through. Okay, and why, why I say stab animals to death is because all <coughs> animals are stabbed to death. Okay, they are shocked, they are stunned, but they are all stabbed in the throat, every single animal. So I'm not over-exaggerating when I say they are stabbed to death. Fish are stabbed to death, chickens are stabbed to death, they're all stabbed to death. Yeah. You're, right. you're, you're loving animals, yeah. and with the other hand there's a knife in it. That food on your plate came from the body of an individual with a personality and they were scared and they didn't want to die. You don't really have to get angry, you've got the truth on your side here. Yeah. Okay, my name's Joey and the reason that we're standing out at the front of this slaughterhouse is because we live in a society of animal lovers, but we love and care for some animals, dogs, cats, but we, we condemn others to a slaughterhouse for our dinner plates and we're here standing against that. Uh, so here we are at the front of the slaughterhouse here. Um, what the slaughterhouses have been doing is rearranging trucks because they know that someone with a lot of publicity is going to be at their slaughterhouse. Um, it's kind of wearing on me because a lot of people are coming out to these vigils for their first time, and it's because I'm there. How many first timers we got here? A lot of first timers. Put your hands up first, save. Excellent, wow. Wow, more than, wow. That's amazing. And it's because I'm there, okay? So it's great that I'm getting them out there, but I really want them to have the experience of bearing witness. The slaughterhouses are, you know, playing little tricks on us, which they're gonna do that, so. Apparently every slaughterhouse is slightly different, 
They could have prepared for this. The newspapers knew about this. You wouldn't look at that and think it was um, a slaughterhouse, would you? It just looked no. like a little house. <laughs> well, that is it's at the back there. They hide it from people. Slaughterhouses are usually on the far outskirts of town. So they can drive trucks in and the public don't see the animals. It's very demotivating, okay, because when I bear witness to animals, it really motivates me and inspires me. In the last three vigils I've been to, they've done this. So it's making me feel like I don't want to stand out the front there. Um, and I feel quite, quite exhausted at the moment. And I'm a bit grumpy and I'm giving Laura a bit of a hard time as well, which is, <laughs> she's on the other end of it. But um, I guess this is all just part of it. It's cold out there and it does take a lot of energy out of me. But you just never know. We might be waiting around here for two hours, then five trucks come. Anyways, just we, what we're gonna start doing is give you a little bit of um, so a little bit of behind the scenes of how I'm feeling and what's going through my head and you know I don't want anyone to think that because I'm having I'm feeling a bit tired or something you know having a bit of a rough time here and there that that is going to stop me so don't get worried about me sometimes I feel really really depressed and sad okay like how the animals would the animals make me feel but I don't give up because I realize that they're, they're doing it a lot harder um, this always happens so this has been happening for a while now ups and downs and I don't always publicize my ups and downs but um, I want to give you a bit of a more of a, a full rounded idea of um, what full-time activism entails um, so, so, so it's about money for you it's not about the lives of innocent animals you, you're making money off off the lives of innocent animals if there were dogs in there would you you don't think animals are innocent do you believe animals are innocent you, you know they're innocent don't you animals but you got to find out what it is that drives you and always remember that especially when it gets hard but yeah don't get worried this is i've been you know we've been fighting this battle for a little while now um yeah that's it Bob. i'm done you get people to connect with animals and once they connect with animals they're less likely to condemn them to a slaughterhouse through their food choices okay so that's a truck full of dead bodies They've been coming out all day. Obviously, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, not many people would want to be consuming flesh. Is there any moral difference between a dog and a pig? No. Okay. So why do you think we treat pigs like objects and dogs like friends? Honestly, don't know. I respect the other right. You do what you want. Yeah. I do what I want. Do you respect do. animals? Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but dogs in the back. You got dogs in the back. Yeah. Do you care for your dogs? Yeah. Wow. And all discrimination is a learned behaviour. Okay, so racism is a learned behavior. Kids aren't just yeah. innately racist. It's something they're, they're taught. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're not innately speciesist. As a child, we think chickens are beautiful. Yeah. Pig, it's something we're taught. We're taught cows, pigs, chickens, and lambs, and fish are food. Therefore, products. Therefore, treated like objects. Hey, you got yours, <laughs> Why do you consume other animals? Think about that. You wouldn't eat your dogs, but you eat cows. They're the same. They're the same. They're the same in the ways that matter. They suffer, they feel pain, they don't want to die. Is that true? You've never heard that before, have you? A lot more out there, a lot more people seem to be vegan well, the, than what I can tell. Like, the movement is growing exponentially. You can do a 22 day vegan challenge. Your hair won't fall out, mate, trust me. <laughs> so this grate here actually goes down quite deep. And the reason for it is that if animals try to run out of here, this is the only exit and their feet get stuck in here in their legs and they can't run out. They can't escape even if they tried. So how sick is that? Great thing to be a part of. It's one of the most powerful forms of activism I've done. And I'll talk to you more about that. If you come, who's coming to the workshop? Okay, I'll talk to you about it at the workshop. All right, good work. We stand together in solidarity with animal liberation and we'll march into the streets and make sure our voices are heard. About vegan ad advocacy. So how to advocate for animals in a respectful way. Uh, giving people effective tools to, to be advocates for animals. I'd like uh, people to go straight from not being vegan to speaking up against it. That would, be, that's, that would be ideal. I had a fire inside of my chest, okay? And I couldn't explain it, but it was there. Every, every time I woke up, it was there every day. Every day I felt like I'd wasted another day. Do you think there's a humane way to take an animal's life? Well, I mean, taking life isn't really humane at all. Okay. 
Yeah. I think if, if, if you had to, the most painless way possible. If, if you had to? Yeah. So if you had to take someone's life, in what situation would you have to take someone's life? Maybe if they were threatening you. Or yeah, or in self-defense. Yeah. That, that, then, then it becomes justified, doesn't it? So if you keep asking them questions, you get them to think. People don't think for themselves these days. They let the TV think for them. They let the doctors think for them. They let their parents think for them. You want them to think for themselves. In some sense, everything is conscious. Is conscious. Yeah. From stones, through vegetables, you think through animals. Oh, you think rocks objects, are conscious? In some way, yeah. Rocks are I'm, conscious. I'm, I'm a bit like a, old, oh, so, okay. so a rock would be conscious like a puppy dog is conscious? No, it would be conscious okay. in a different way. Okay, so do you, believe a rock, is, do you believe a rock is sentient? Do you know what sentience is? Yeah. Self-aware, aware of their own existence. Yeah, possibly. You cut a carrot in half, it's a lot different to <laughs> cutting a puppy dog in half and you're, you're every aspect of yourself, your intuition, everything will tell you that that puppy, that puppy dog has suffered and that carrot hasn't. Okay, now you, each question should lead them to the vegan conclusion. Okay, so you think a rock would feel pain and suffer? Possibly. A rock would feel pain and suffer? Possibly. Okay. Wow, it's possible. Yeah. Well, it's possible that, you know, a lot last, of things are possible, the, aren't they? The last thing I said Do you have evidence for your claim, though? No. Do you have it? I've never seen anything more effective than this. You're really watching people just wake up right there in front of your eyes. So they, they avoid pain and suffering, don't they, animals? Like, if you try to hurt an animal, they try to avoid it. Yeah, yeah. So if they're avoiding something, they don't like it, yeah? yeah? And you can probably see that the animal doesn't like what we're doing to them if we're causing them pain and suffering, I'm yeah? I'm sure when I go to Thompson's, yeah. the animals are not going to yeah. be very happy. Yeah, okay, so they, they don't want to die, basically, animals. No. Okay, and uh, you don't get the same feeling if you've seen a... Well, when you do watch animals be slaughtered in front of your face, tell me if it gives you the same feeling seeing an apple get cut in half. Right. Okay. No, good point. I okay. Understand. When we start viewing beings as products, we have a problem in society. We start viewing human be beings as products. Uh, any being as a product, a resource, we have a problem. So do you think it's okay to turn sentient beings into products? Into food? Into products, yeah. Yeah, farmed food. Yeah. Well, do you think we have alternatives to sentient beings? If we, if it's a big well, industry, they man. Yes. They want to sell as much as possible. They don't think of animals as uh, beings that deserve uh, rights. At the, at, the, at the moment, animals are slaves with no rights. They are products. Treating them properly doesn't involve shooting someone and chopping them into pieces, yeah? Someone. They're a someone. They're not a something. Animals aren't things. Well, basically... Do you think animals are things? No, I don't think they're things. I okay. think they're animals. Yeah, we are animals. Yeah. It's not hard to convince someone that stabbing an animal to death is wrong. Because if we're going to eat cows for protein and iron, okay, there's, there's iron and protein in dog flesh, but we're not going to stab a dog to, de to, to death get, to get this iron and protein, are we? So, do you think a dog has more moral value than an apple? Should we treat a dog the same as we treat a potato? I think you should treat them all equally well. You think you treat a potato the same as you treat a, a puppy dog? Do you know what I mean? Like we chop potatoes up and we fry them in a fryer. Do you think we should do that to a puppy dog? No. Okay. We're not going to use certain animals to exploit them for the nutrients in their bodies, but we do with these other animals, like there's no other way. It's very hard to break a habit, and so if, if you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of generations eating meat, then it can be very hard yeah. to feel to break that. Okay. So the habit involves a victim, yeah? It's a choice that people make. It's a choice? It's a choice that people make. Yeah, but make. so are other immoral things that involve sentient victims. Well, I don't really want to bring morality into it that much. Bring this into the picture, we have thousands of alternatives. Okay, so does sensory pleasure justify an immoral act to an innocent victim? Again, you've brought in the immoral act very quickly. Well, I can tell you some other immoral acts that give, derive, people derive sensory pleasure out of. Yeah. Uh, sexual assault is one, okay? Yeah. Now they derive... the same as eating meat? I'm not saying rape is the same as eating animals, but I'm saying there's a pleasure response and a victim. Yeah. Pleasure response and a victim. So a rapist gets sensory pleasure out of an immoral act. Okay, now eating animals, an animal has to suffer and die for, not just suffer, they don't have to suffer, they get shot in the head and killed for, okay? And we get sensory pleasure out of it, that's what you said, animals taste good, yeah. okay? How is... Meat tastes good, I didn't say animals taste good. You meat, is my... meat is animal, that's a euphemism you're using. Like, do you eat dead animal bodies? Yeah, <laughs> what do you mean by dead like, animal bodies? Like dead birds or dead cows or... Oh, you don't eat animals at all? Do you eat oh, dead I fish? Eat <laughs> like, do you eat beef? Do you eat yeah. animal? Oh, is that what it is? It's not beef. Beef is a euphemism, okay? They use them words to trick you into thinking that it's food. Well, 
Okay, so you eat dead animals, yeah? It's flesh. What was that cheese that you oh, said? Yeah. It's flesh from a dead animal. Pig Meat is a piece of an animal. Cow beef. They're euphemisms. No, they're words and they mean something to me. No, they've been... They're part of the process. They help why your... They I'm help not your. Myself. I'm not well, myself. well, saying something. You can't eat a pig because it keeps moving it's around. You can eat pork because it stays still on the But it's the a place. piece of an animal. Yeah, of course it is. Okay, so you're eating animals when you eat pork. I'm eating meat. I don't like the language that takes away from what it actually was. So you eat dead birds? I'm not actually a fan of meat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah she don't. I eat loads of fish. And so you eat dead fish, yeah. basically. So, okay, so but you only. I don't eat animals at all. I, you, you're you calling an animal a product. Process, yeah. Because you know what I do for a living. Yeah, yeah. But we use words like meat and pork and beef to steer us away that it come from an actual animal. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, of course. This language helps us uh, ignore the fact that we're actually eating slaughterhouse, uh, slaughterhouse food, animals that didn't want to die. This is how culture, um, eating animal culture, come about. Yeah. Yeah. And vegans are maybe going to change it. You don't, I would never ask anyone to respect someone's choice to cause suffering or, you know, a killing to an innocent being. I mean, I respect you as a vegan, but can you respect me as an omnivore? Oh, well, only four years ago I was eating animals probably more than anyone else. But Big, I, massive steak. I, 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 I respect right to, you as a person. I, right to live as I, live? I, I respect you as a person, but I do not respect your choice to affect an innocent being, okay? Because right. there's a victim involved in that. I can never respect that, but I will show you respect, okay? But I cannot respect your exercising your right to hurt other beings. I've never asked you to respect that choice, but I'd ask you to show them respect, okay? Because they don't know. And there was a time when you didn't know. If it was just a personal choice, I wouldn't even be standing here. I wouldn't. If you wanted to get pissed with your mates, no worries, that you're, you're affecting your own health, you're not hurting anyone around you, I wouldn't even be standing here. But there's an innocent being that cannot speak for themselves involved in your choice, okay? And that's the same with any other form of injustice. People think that you need meat for protein. No, bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> and after being vegan for a while and seeing all the bodybuilders and athletes and people doing amazing on plant-based eating, you realize how ludicrous that is. I also learned about heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer on earth. About 17 million people a year die of heart disease. No one really talks about the cause of it though. You take tablets for your cholesterol. All you have to do is stop eating cholesterol. The thing is, these animal foods are killing people. Okay, and this, the overwhelming mountains of science that supports that it's just, it's crazy that, that this, isn't become, this isn't so mainstream that it's just publicized everywhere. But these industries have vested interest. Your consumers, they don't want to turn you off their product. Okay, we're stabbing them to death for an unnecessary reason. Okay, we know we don't need it for health. We've got a mountain of science now. Peer reviewed journals. Anyone know what a peer review is? Okay, it's when they get a bunch of scientists to agree that this science is legitimate. So they get a study done by a bunch of scientists, another bunch of scientists sit around and they go, okay, yep, that is an unbiased study. So they all work together, don't they? Pharmaceutical industry, the meat and dairy industry, they're all lapping it up. The doctors will prescribe you medication for a lifestyle um, illness. They can't make money off telling you to eat fruits and vegetables, can they? Because you'll, ne you'll never be in that office again, will you? Heart disease surgeons don't want you to stop eating cholesterol, you're paying for their holiday. The British Dietetics Association and the American Dietetics Association come up with a declaration saying that uh, vegan yeah. diets are healthy for all stages of life, including pregnancy, infancy, and yeah. athlete, athletes. Okay, so taking saturated fat, cholesterol, and carcinogenic meat out of your diet isn't a bad yeah, thing for your children. Yeah, but that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to dispel um, the pharmaceutical industry or do anything like that. I'm here to speak for animals. And that's it. You know, if we, if we, it's unnecessary to consume the flesh or things that come out of them, why are we doing it to them for? Just ask yourself that question. People think veganism is a diet. It's not a diet, okay? Vegetarianism is a diet. It's where you don't eat meat, okay? Veganism is a philosophy which extends to diet. Oh, that's pretty cruel. That particular slaughterhouse there. Luckily, I get my free range eggs. You know, luckily the slaughterhouse that, you know, down the road from my uh, fancy butcher doesn't kill them like that. Or they will say, there's a better way to do this. No, and that, that animal got really well taken care of. It was, it was yeah. respected as a, you know. It was, I understand that, yeah. It was like, it had a name and everything, you know. Yeah. And, and, and do you think that's even more of a, a betrayal? No, no. To, tear, to care for someone and then to end their life when you don't need to. Like, well, in that animal's eyes, the animal would have felt betrayed, yeah? You are, you are right. Organic, barn-raised hens, 
straight to the same slaughterhouse to be hung upside down and have their throats slashed open and the flesh ripped off of their bones, just like every factory farm raised hen. No different. Now this is a welfareist message, and we're not about animal welfare, we want to free animals, okay? We don't want happy slaves. You, you think the animals should be treated with high welfare before they are Absolutely. shot in the head and Absolutely. chopped up into pieces? Absolutely. There's no humane way to do this, and there's no humane way to exploit someone and treat them as a product. Okay, so this is where you need to bring it to if it does get, go down that cruelty, welfareist track. I mean, you probably spend a lot of time talking to family members who don't want to hear it, friends who just like think that you've you know, gone silly, but here you speak to people that are really interested because the ones who are interested actually stop. All right, so you, you know, that, that's a really fulfilling thing to do. You don't feel as isolated. You have a community of uh, vegans who want the same thing as you do. Um, if you turn someone vegan in one conversation, usually, usually they've been thinking about it. All right, so they're already most of the way there. You are right, like, you know, as, as much as I try to sort of... Justify it. Yeah, it's, it's slip, like, every day I wake up, it's more of like... I have to just... There's contradictions there, yeah. isn't there? I, yeah. I, I struggle to see the point in it a lot now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that's why we're passionate about it. No, I don't judge, I don't go, you're a bad person. Because I understand, I was a victim of the same conditioning. Exactly the same, for years, for, till I was 26. I'm 31 now. Holding two opposing beliefs. Yeah. I love animals but I kill them for their bodies. If you get them to a point where you've got them, bang, I've got them, they don't have a response, they're going, wow, they've the penny drop moment. They probably won't admit it to you, but you go, that really nice talking to you, here's a card, watch some of them, you know, have a think about it. You've done your job, uh, send them off. Okay, so I'm just helping wake people up and go, hey, that's not meat, that's not a product, that was an animal, okay? All right, well, have you got a, like, a card yeah. contact thing? Yeah, here. Keep getting involved with doing outreach. You know, and, and this is how we make change. People here have never, a lot of people here have never even heard about veganism. You, this might be the first conversation they ever have on this topic. So, and you know, you can just change someone right there in front of your eyes and you can watch them transform. So it's an amazing feeling. Don't use this, this has been programmed for many years. Okay, use this, you can't program your heart. Okay, conscience. With the slaughterhouses, um, if they want to play that game, that's fine. You know, then we'll just, you know, we just won't tell them when we're coming. This, we're going to pack up. Okay, pack up all the sides, pack up all the food, pack up all the tables, take it all to the car. Okay, and about 15 minutes we're going to hang out near the cars. Alright, and then we'll come back. Yeah, try and trick them. They trick us, we'll trick them. You filming? They can't stop us from bearing witness. You know, they can try, but I don't think that's going to work.